All right, so process builder, let's jump into it. Um, so every process builder needs three things, all right? And forgive me one second, I hear some background noise, I'm gonna get rid of it here. You only need three things. You need a trigger, you need a criteria, and you need an action, all right? So what does that mean? What object is kicking off the automation rule? When is this particular automation rule gonna fire? And then what's it gonna do? All right, so, oh, and this thing I always forget, activate it. You can create your rule, but if it's not turned on, it's not gonna work. So I'll create rules and then go and test them, and it doesn't work, and I'll pull my hair out, and it's because I forgot to turn it on. So don't be me, turn it on. All right, so let's walk through an example automation rule. Let's say you wanna call back a lead anytime the call me back date is filled out. So let's say I call you, and now's not a good time, and I gotta call you back. Well, when do you want me to call you back? Call me back next Wednesday, all right? I put next Wednesday into a date field and that's the date I should call you back, all right? So how do we do it? First, we create a uh, process builder rule and we're gonna start by saying what object it's gonna run off of. So in this case, we're gonna run off of the lead object and we're running when records are either created or edited. Then, we're gonna actually use a custom date field to determine uh, what the trigger is, what the criteria is. So when does this rule fire? So this rule is gonna fire when the follow-up date field is not empty, is not null, and it's been changed. So if you put in a date or if you change the date and it's not empty, you didn't delete the date, then I'm gonna fire. And what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take an action. And this action is to create a task. Now notice, I'm filling out every single field on the task. The task would be created, but it wouldn't have a subject, it wouldn't have a due date, it wouldn't know who it's assigned to, it doesn't know what lead it's tied to. So notice, every one of those fields, what the date is, what the description is, who all of those, you have to specify, okay? So you can't just assume that by creating a task, it's gonna know who to assign the task to, when to assign it, or where to put it. So just make sure you pay attention to those details. Uh, and in general, start simple. Like you're gonna get off this webinar, you're gonna be empowered, you're gonna be cooking with gas, but don't run out there and make the most complex automation rule you can think of. Start simple. And even if you can think of a complex rule, break it down to, into its little basic parts and start off with a simple use case. Also, these rules fire pretty much any time uh, the data gets updated. So if you have a data loader, spreadsheet, if you have a spreadsheet and you want to load it through the data loader and you load 500 opportunities and you have an automation rule that fires when an opportunity is created, it's going to fire 500 times. Now, I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's going to send an email. I don't know if it's assigning a task. I don't know what it's doing, uh, but you need to make sure you turn off your rule if you don't want it to fire when you load data. Okay. Also, automation rules can fire when you're not expecting them. To fire. So you want to be really careful about the criteria. Otherwise, they might automatically do that thing when you don't mean it to be doing that thing. Okay, so getting your criteria very fine, fine-tuned and focused is important. And last but definitely not least, don't do this in production. Put it in a sandbox, right? Test it in your sandbox, then recreate it in production. The last thing you want to do is really send emails uh, customers to e <laughs> send emails to customers or really create a bunch of tasks that you didn't mean to or were dirty or didn't look right. So Test it in your sandbox. All right, and for tasks, let's use this later on as like a uh, appendix uh, for yourself. But these are the fields you pretty much need for a task to be created, right? The, if you use the name ID field, that's for contacts or leads. What contact or lead is this task related to? The related to ID field is every other object, accounts, opportunities, quotes, everything that's not a person, you use the related to ID. If it's a person that you're relating that task to, use the name ID field, right? And then the other fields hopefully make sense. And the due date, I just recommend using formulas. You're not gonna wanna put an automation rule that says, every time this happens, the task is November 7th, because <laughs> November 7th is gonna pass and all the tasks are not gonna make sense. So use formulas, like every, uh, this task is due in seven days from now, or this task is due 30 days from the renewal date, something like that. But use formulas for task dates, all right? That's the slides, let's get into it.
So I've got my automation environment with five different automation rules. We're gonna build one together and then we're gonna walk through the other ones just in the interest of time. You don't have to see me start from scratch on all of them, all right? Let's go to my lead object. So I'm gonna to go to a lead record. Here I've got uh, Armando, all right? Now, let's see, he's got nothing on his record. There's nothing here. So let's do the call me back one. So I'm gonna show you the call me back automation rule and then we're gonna make a brand new one from scratch together. So, I'm on the phone with Armando. Hey Armando, now a good time? No, it's not a good time. You're paying attention to the news, this is crazy. Call me back in July. All right, okay. <laughs> July it is. Hit save, and that's it. Call me back reminder, set in July. So how'd that work? How do we do that? Let's start with this real basic one, and then we'll build one from scratch. All right, so I'm gonna go into setup. I'm the admin, and I can create stuff, all right? And uh, you could, from right here, just say workflow process. I don't like how we name this because this just takes you to process builder. Uh, or on the side here, just start typing process builder and you'll notice there's a process automation section. And this is where all the different automation stuff lives. But we're gonna go to process builder. That's what we're doing today. All right, here are my rules, okay? So uh, let's take a look at the... Um, Remember to follow up on a lead automation rule. Now notice there's versions in here. So you can only have one active version of a process at any time. And this is the, these are the mistakes I made beforehand. And then when you have it working the way you want, you make that one active and the rest go inactive. Okay. And now that this is my active rule, I can't change it unless I save it as a new version. So I could copy this and save it as a new version. But every time you activate one, it kind of freezes until you create a new version of it, all right? So here's my workflow rule or my process builder rule. It works on leads whenever a lead was created or edited, not just created, but edited as well. And it looks for that follow-up date, right? So if the call me back field is changed and it's not empty, then we're gonna take some action. And the action we took is we're creating a record and the record we're creating is a task and we're defaulting all the values in there and that's what you just saw all right now what about the voicemail one right so what if someone comes in here and goes iman i want to log a voicemail i've already made it really easy notice i made it really easy one button to log a voicemail using this action okay but what if you want an automated follow-up when a voicemail happens that's when things get really cool so let's create that together so i'm in process builder and i'm going to create a brand new rule so i'm going to call it voicemail follow up, okay? And uh, I'll say stream so we know it's for the stream because <laughs> I think I've done this a few times, stream, here we go. And it's gonna fire when a record changes. It could have been fired by another process builder rule. It could have been fired when another system made a call to Salesforce, but this is the most common use case. Well, what am I paying attention to? What object am I looking at to make sure this rule fires? In this case, it might throw you, but I'm actually looking for a task record. That's what a voicemail record gets logged as. It's a task. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a process builder rule on tasks. All right. Only when the task is created or when it's edited. I'm just going to say when it's created. I mean, when you log the voicemail, you're not going to go back and edit it later. This is this is when you create it. Okay. So create it only. Well, is it just gonna fire all the time? I mean, what if I create a task for a demo or a follow-up appointment or a anything? I don't want it to just keep creating follow-up calls all the time, so we need a criteria. So, uh, did I log a voicemail? Now you can call this whatever you want. The criteria name is just so this logically makes sense to you. And then it's gonna fire when the criteria is true or when your formula is true or when it's just always gonna fire. In this case, when the conditions are true. So here, I'm going to look for the subject of my, vo of my task to be voicemail. If you create a task and you call it a voicemail, uh, I'm going to assume you log the voicemail. Now, I could do more searches like make sure that the status is complete, make sure the date is today or in the past. You could get more granular with your criteria, but for this demo, I'm just checking to see if it's a voicemail. Great. So it's a voicemail. What do you want to do? You want to send an email in two days from now, two days before or after any other date field or whatever. So I could leave you a voicemail and you can automatically two hours after that voicemail, 
get an email from me that goes, hey, Todd, sorry, I missed you. We'll call you back later. I could just, we just automate that and pick the right email template and be done, right? In this case, what are we gonna do? Notice there's a bunch of actions. We could fire code, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna create a record, that's actually what we're gonna do. But email alerts, launching flows, posting to chatter, launching another automation rule, sending notifications. These notifications are these little bells that you get here and also push notifications on the mobile phone, which is really nice. Or you could force the record to be submitted for approval, or you could even update the record itself. So there's lots of things you could do. In this case, we're gonna create a record. All right, well, what am I gonna create? I'm gonna create my follow up task. So what am I creating? Uh, I'm creating a task, okay. So these are the required fields. Uh, so who is it assigned to? Now I could, notice I could just say, anytime this task is created, make it high priority or normal priority or whatever. But what if I wanna use values from the task that launched the rule? Well, that's this field reference thing. With the field reference thing, you can say, look, I don't know who we should assign this task to, just assign this task to whoever owned the other task or assign this task to the lead owner, assign this task to the opportunity owner. So if you already have a value in the system and you wanna kind of dynamically fill it in, it's these field references. So here, I'm just gonna say, go and get me whoever the task was assigned to. So the voicemail was owned by somebody, make this follow-up owned by the same person. Uh, it's high priority, the status is not started. Let's do the date. The date equals what? What are we gonna do? We can do a formula, right? And I like something like make the date today plus three days. Call them back in three days, all right? What else though? If I stop right there, you'll never see this task because I never associated it to anything. I never linked it to an account or a person. That's why I'm using this name ID. So now I'm gonna say make this uh, associate to the same person that we called and also make it associate to the same records that the call was for. So now this task is linked to the same thing that the other task was linked to, uh, but two days out, and we're just gonna have one more thing here called subject, and we're just gonna call it callback. There you go. I think I got all the records. I think I got all the fields in there. Activate. <laughs> we're doing it live, so I, I might have missed something, but there we go. So now when Armando logs a voicemail and we hit save, Look, there's the callback scheduled for two days from now. Okay, so that's how that that's how that works. <laughs>